everyone and welcome to our presentation on the beauty industry within TikTok. We're particularly interested in this um, as TikTok has undoubtedly transformed the game for beauty. So today we have Frankie Cook here from TikTok, who's the agency partnerships manager in the UK, and Hannah Crouch, our paid media director from Three Pipe presenting. After the presentations, we'll hold a short Q&A with both Frankie and Hannah. But first of all, I'm going to hand over to Frankie to take us through her presentation. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks so much, Fran. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, so like Fran said, I'm going to take you through um, a little intro to TikTok, our ad solutions, a bit of an insight into the beauty talk community, um, and then also some ideas on how you can sort of supercharge your creative at the end. So to kick us off, then, this is the agenda for today. So like I said, we'll do an intro. We'll take you through the beauty talk community any brand and e-com solutions and then supercharging your creative and then like Fran said we'll have some questions at the end as well. So to kick us off a little bit of an intro to our platform first. I think the main takeaway for today is that we are an entertainment platform. We're massively powered by, by our communities and we have all different sorts of cultures and communities on the platform. They're constantly engaging with each other, constantly trying to discover new communities to engage with as well. And even though I know we get compared to the likes of Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and Twitter, there is quite a big difference between all of us. Um, and that is the main thing being people don't check TikTok, they come to watch TikTok. So unlike social platforms where you might be checking in on what your friends are doing and uh, commenting on your friends and engaging with your friends on TikTok, people there to entertain, they're there to watch and they're also there to create as well. And so based on the app Annie data that we see, so this is public data that you guys can go and have a look at yourselves, um, TikTok users are actually a quite a unique audience. So if you're looking at this slide, imagine this as the percentage of unduplicated users that sit across TikTok versus other platforms. So 47% of TikTok users, for example, are not on Facebook, which I think is a really, really interesting call out, especially as we get compared quite regularly. 39% are not on Snapchat and actually 15% are not on YouTube. So we are more up there with YouTube users than we are with Instagram and, and Meta in general. And so looking into the communities that make up TikTok then, and especially the beauty talk community, I think the main thing that we need to take away is that we are a full screen sound on platform. And like I said, you don't go to check TikTok, you go to watch TikTok. And what that means is it creates this really big diverse space for all these different communities to entertain each other, to communicate with each other and to engage with each other. And it creates these different community subjects. So cooking and ASMR, learning, family fun, pets and beauty is a really, really big one on the platform. And you can see that there's a lot of trending hashtags on the platform as well. And this is where we really start to see beauty trends start is through hashtags in particular. So you can see Beauty Talk has an absolutely whopping 17 billion views, nails 101 billion, makeup 320 billion, the list goes on and you guys can check this on our platform yourselves if you're ever interested to see whether or not your brand is trending as a hashtag for example, you can always go on to the platform and have a look at how many views you've got against your own brand. And the beauty talk community keeps on growing. It really is an interest that's evergreen. You can see that all the way from back in 2019 up to September 2022, we're continuing to see the trends grow across the platform. And it's continuing from there as well, all the way into 2023 as well. We actually saw a 57% increase in year on year growth from September 2021 versus September 2022. And Beauty Talk is all about teaching, it's all about learning, maybe about a new beauty trend, how to apply a certain product, maybe how to um, increase your skincare routine. And we're finding that Beauty Talk teaches that high standards are actually no longer achievable, especially when we were in the middle of lockdown. High standards wasn't a thing. We were learning how to do things ourselves, how to transform our beauty game. And 74% of TikTok users agree that TikTok has transformed their beauty game in one way or another. 
And there's also an element of edutainment, um, education and entertainment, which raises the community's competency. So people are learning how to do things themselves and better as well. 82% say they've learned something about beauty from TikTok. 43% of beauty users use TikTok specifically to learn about something new as well. So maybe that's a way to brighten their under eyes. Maybe that's a way to improve their skincare regime or even um, how to contour better. I know I could always learn how to contour better. So it's something that I'm looking into. But all these different tips and tricks that people are looking for in that edutainment era. And what we're seeing is this proliferation of trends on TikTok, like I said, and it means that one aesthetic can't just dominate. Videos are really quick and easy to watch. Um, and it's the top way to sort of help discover new content on TikTok. And we're getting all these different insights into areas in beauty. So soap brows is a really big one. Um, the passport hair, I actually haven't heard of this one, but it's a really, really big one, 141,000 views. So you can tap into all these little micro trends as well. And if you're a brand and it's really important to be on the platform to make sure you're keeping up with all of these trends as you go. Beauty isn't one size fits all. Again, really, really important. Um, the content massively varies. So it's not just one thing that you're tapping into. It's loads and loads of different trends. 38% of TikTok beauty users say TikTok is representative of different people and different cultures as well. And it shows content in every kind of style you can imagine, which is really, really important if you're thinking about tapping into those different communities on TikTok. It's not just a one size fits all. Everyone is on TikTok. So you're making sure you're reaching out to all these different audiences via your brand. And they're also looking for higher uh, higher quality products that are really easy to use and they're really long lasting as well. And you can see that when you're looking at what TikTok users are looking for when buying products, all the way up there is high quality, something really easy to use, long lasting, durable. And the main one is that it's an affordable price. So as long as we're making sure we're getting across, the value is there. If you're selling maybe a high value product, making sure that you're putting across that it's high quality, it's easy to use, ticking off all those boxes will ensure that TikTok users are more likely to purchase your product at the end of the day. And what this fuels is the TikTok made me buy it phenomenon. I'm sure everyone would have heard of this. Um, but essentially, it's leading to all these brands seeing stocks sell out globally, not just nationally. One in four people bought something after seeing a beauty TikTok video. Um, so that's a quarter of people, which is an absolutely huge number of people if you think about conversion rates. And 28 billion uh, TikTok made me buy it views in general. I'm sure you would have all seen the Boots stalls um, in their store. They have a TikTok made me buy it shelf. It's always completely empty. I think there are a few videos going around about it. So it just goes to show the power of TikTok in terms of TikTok made me buy it. And then this leads to this ongoing relationship between commerce, community and entertainment. And we like to call it an infinite loop. It's not about just a full funnel. Once you get to the end of the funnel, it doesn't just stop. It's an infinite loop. You're constantly engaging. You're constantly amplifying within the community. You're constantly in accelerating your brand. And it inspires users to buy, to sell and to help your brand grow as well. And like I said, this selling power extends to beauty brand campaigns. And you can see here when you're looking at TikTok paid and TikTok paid and earned activity, we've got a significantly uh, stronger return than, say, total digital and traditional media as well. So looking at brand solutions then, how we can help your brands grow on TikTok, there are a few different ad products that you can use to help really engage and drive awareness within the community. And the first one is helping you stand out with these premium ad placements. So if you think about a user journey on TikTok, there's always those top placements for ads. The first being top view, the second top feed, and then going into the in-feed ads. So I'll take you through that in a little bit more detail now. So top view is essentially the first ad of the day that a user will see. When they open the app, it'll be the very first video that they see. It's a 24 hour takeover, it's high impact and attention. It has really new targeting options as well. So you can target at specific categories. So if you wanted to target a beauty category in particular, you can do that. It's fully reservation. So it is a managed service. We do it all for you. And the main thing to remember is that it's a 24 hour takeover. You can buy 100% impression share of the day. You can buy different snippets of impression share. You don't have to buy the full 100%. It's completely flexible on budget, but there is a 
minimum spend of $50,000. So if you're ever interested in running a top view, high impact and attention premium format as the first ad of the day, reach out to us and we can give you a quote on that. The next in the user journey is the top feed. So once they've seen the top view, which is the first ad of the day, the top feed is the first in feed ad of the day. So they see the top view, they then scroll down to two or three organic videos, then they'll see the top feed ad placement. So like I said, this is in feed. It's based on reach and frequency by. You can leverage interactive add-ons as well with top feed. And there's two different types. You've got the top feed and then you've got standard feed after, which is just your generic in feed spark ads. You can optimize for reach on this objective, video views or traffic. And there is no minimum required cost, which is a really big selling point, I think. Um, but there is a minimum requirement of 100,000 reach per ad group. So as long as we're hitting that, it's absolutely fine. And you can run top feed for as long as you want. It's a really great way to drive maximum brand awareness without the cost for it as well. And then if we're thinking about more elaborate brand solutions and you're wanting to engage more of your audiences, you can think about more premium ad solutions such as a branded effect. And branded effect is something that we see a lot of beauty clients use at the moment, um, especially when you're thinking about how to use a product, how a product looks before you buy it. They do a lot of trials of branded effect. Essentially how it works is you'll work with our um brand effects team, they will build out the brand effect for you, either a standard or an advanced branded effect, depending on what you want. There's a whole ideation process. We'll then put together that branded effect and that branded effect will be live for your brand in the effects panel for six days. After that six days, you will have a 60 day branded effect page where all user generated content is collected under that page. So for 60 days, it's a branded effect page containing all the user generated content that you will then have as a brand at your fingertips to promote if you want to. We see really deep engagement off of this format, really high brand experiences, and it really inspires creativity and joy amongst all our audiences. So this is a really exciting one that we saw um, around contouring. And I really like it because you can choose your face shape and then it develops your contouring style based on your face shape. And it's a great ways to test out a product in real time. And this is just an example of Schwarzkopf that did a really, really fun branded effect. They encouraged users to play and it raised awareness of their different colorful shades that were coming out with the branded effect and a media mix of Top View, Top Feed and Spark as as well. So they had the whole package. Um, branded effect is a minimum spend of around £118,000, but that also includes the Top View as well and all production as well off the back of it. Schwarzkopf saw really, really good results. So 22.3 million video views and 6,000 branded effect videos. So if you think about all that user generated content, 6,000 videos created off the back of it. And that's for you to use in Spark if you get permission from the user. And then uh, final is just on Spark ads. So this is a format that we highly recommend for all brands at the moment. It's a really great way to amplify your organic presence as well as your paid presence. We'd recommend using Spark ads wherever you possibly can in place of in-feed ads. And what it does is it helps you to build and sustain a loyal community. So work to build on your communities and also build your marketing spikes. And we see really, really strong engagement. So we've seen so far on average versus just normal in-feed ads, 142% engagement rate increase, 30% conversion rate increase, uh, completion rate increase, sorry, and 43% conversion rate increase. So you can see that it works all the way across the funnel, not just in brand, but it's a really great way to boost any organic posts you have, but also amplify anything with paid spend and fill up your organic profile as well. And the great thing about Spark ads is that rather than in-feed ad where you click in it and you get taken to the site, with Spark Ads, you can click on it and it'll be taken to the app profile, so the TikTok profile. And there a user can either discover more about your uh, profile or they can click through to the actual landing page. And then you've got the premium add-ons as well. So these are things that you can use in conjunction with your Spark Ads for top feed, for in-feed, whatever you like. But they always drive increased engagement, we particularly see anyway. So 
pop out showcase is a really big one for beauty brands especially if you want to focus specifically on a product we've got a gesture if you want to invite users to interact slightly more with your video and super like is a really big one at the moment this is actually coming out with top view as well in 2023 so you'll have the option to click a like and then you can have loads of different images fill the screen and you can work to create that with us if you're interested in running a super like and then non-premium add-ons as well. So we've got the likes of the display card, voting sticker, the gift code sticker, and the countdown sticker, which I really, really like. It helps build sort of momentum around maybe a big product launch that you want to run and generate that excitement around product launches as well. So I'm going to pass over now to um, Hannah, who's just going to chat you through some sort of current client activity they've run uh, on the ad solutions that I've just taken you through. Thanks, Frankie. Yeah, one of um, our clients GHG, we've done a lot with these add-ons. So you can see here is an example of where we've done the countdown and we did this for a promotion, like a short-term timeframe promotion. We've also um, run a lot of the other branded sort of effects on the top. And I think what's really important is we do just see on the platform, these really increase that engagement and drive users to the landing page and drive more response. So it's definitely um, a key one for us to test. And I think the good thing about TikTok is they're always bringing out new ones. So I think it's keep on top of what's coming out, keep testing, keep trying, because they, they really do work. And then I think the other thing is, you know, we are just seeing more and more of our clients really investing in Spark ads, really boosting um, their organic content. And as we can see here for Elements, we're really just seeing that that's increasing their followers, increasing their likes. So again, wherever possible is, you know, run your in-feed, run your, your main campaigns, but do boost that content through Spark Ads as well and have that dual strategy on the platform is one of the top tips um, from 3Pipe in, in really monetizing the platform. Absolutely. Thanks, Hannah. Um, so I'll take you through the e-commerce landscape next then. This is focusing more on the lower funnel. Um, and like I said earlier on TikTok, we see ourselves as an infinite loop rather than a full funnel. And we really see the full shopping journey happens really, really quickly on TikTok. You can go through the whole marketing funnel in just one step. And that's because we've got that fueled power of the TikTok made me buy it phenomenon. So people can go from discovering a product all the way through to purchase in just one day. We tend to see around 14% higher ROAS for TikTok paid media compared to other digital channels. And 47% of TikTok users say they bought something they saw on TikTok more than another platform. So again, really high intent to purchase. And I thought this was really an in interesting slide, um, just in terms of where we sit compared to other channels for the latest shopping trends. So we're all the way up there on TikTok with the recommendation of a family or friend member um, using a product or seeing other people use it from friends. But then you also see Facebook ads and Instagram ads kind of down the bottom with digital ads, print magazines, Twitter ads. So we're a really highly trusted platform, which I think is really, really important when you're thinking about that path to purchase. And so what we did was we created this TikTok shopping ecosystem to help fuel that path to purchase, like I mentioned, and help encourage people to complete their shopping journey on TikTok. And that includes TikTok shop, video shopping ads, Spark ads, which we run through as well, and the interactive add-ons too. So you can use all of that through the e-com system as well as in brand too. So that's really important to remember. But just to take you through what these e-com solutions look like, First of all, it all starts and ends with your product catalog. As long as you have a product catalog uploaded into TikTok, then you can use TikTok shop or you can use just your product catalog with Spark Ads as well. So as long as we've got that set up, speak to us. We can help you setting it up if you don't have it already, but then you're good to go with TikTok shop. And looking at TikTok shop, so it's a way to make the most engaging entertainment even easier to shop. So the way you can use it with uh, video shopping ads or Spark ads, you can connect to TikTok shop and the user can go and browse your products in your shop and go all the way through the full shopping journey and complete the purchase in the TikTok shop. I think that's a really important thing to call out as well. I know Instagram shop is quite a big question for us, sort of how do we compare? I know Instagram shop apparently cannot complete purchase, whereas TikTok shop, you can complete purchase within TikTok shop without leaving the app at all. So it's a lot less disruptive. It's a lot more, um, it's a lot easier path to purchase as well. And it's a great way for people to discover new products and add to cart all within the TikTok app. And TikTok shop can work in conjunction with some other really great e-com um, products. 
One of those is video shopping ads. We're actually developing these in 2023 as well. Uh, you can use video shopping ads with um, loads of different interactive add-ons. If you think about the display cards, the countdowns, you can use it with all of that as well. You can use it with TikTok Shop too. Um, there's personalized recommendations for user interactions based on what they've already looked at. And it has the option to um, for people to discover products that are featured in that video as well. And this is a really, really important format if you're working with TikTok Shop. We'd always recommend running video shopping ads where you possibly can to help maximize uh, the impact of your e-com strategy. And then we've also got live shopping ads. Um, this is something that isn't done as often, but I think it's something that the beauty community should really keep an eye out on and really leverage as much as possible when they can. It's a really great way to amplify um, any lives that you do and boost sales. The great thing about live shopping ads is that you can demonstrate the use of a product and you can showcase the best way to use it, recommended tips, application tips, for example, showcase all of this in real time for users to watch and discover. And then they can simply swipe up and actually purchase the products within TikTok shop. It's a really great way to drive traffic and get people to purchase all in one go. Like we said, it's a the, the shopping journey happens really, really quickly on TikTok. Um, and it's a really, really great, great way to like engage and showcase your products as well. And the great thing about live shopping ads is that you can drive live traffic to the live as well. So if you wanna run a Spark ad uh, driving traffic, you can direct that traffic straight to the live at the same time. It's a really great way to amplify your live presence too. And this was um, a little example from Wonder Skin, who increased their sales of their signature lip stain with TikTok's newest video shopping ad solution. So like you can see here, they ran the video, they featured the products underneath, and that was completely shoppable. You could click through and purchase it within TikTok shop. They saw a really high increase in Veras of 36% and a 43% decrease in CPA. So overall, a really, really efficient campaign for them using video shopping ads. And then last but not least, um, I can hear myself banging on now, but I'm sure this is the bit that you've all been waiting for, is the creative inspiration. So how can you supercharge your creative in the best way possible? And I think the main call out here is creators. It's the thing to focus on the most. It's the thing that a lot of our brands are already working on. Working with creators to promote your brand is a really great way to engage communities, especially communities that are already trusting in their creators. So we can see that 69% of users who interact with creators say they've made a purchase because of creator recommendations. 22% have found about, out about brands via posts or reviews from creators. And 68% have researched a product or a service after viewing a creator's post. And this is something that we're focusing got as well um, on in 2023 is leveraging that search um, ability on TikTok. I think I saw a, a post recently that said that millennials and Gen Z are actually using TikTok as their search engine rather than Google now. And we're starting to think about how we can leverage that, especially with search ads that are coming out uh, this year. So keep an eye out for that launch um, and keyword targeting capabilities as well. But all of that comes from creators promoting these products too. And so we can help you find creators through Creator Marketplace. This is one of our um, self-serve platforms. So if you as a brand want to join Creator Marketplace or for example, 3Pipe have access to Creator Marketplace, we can help you discover creators and also brief creators in. So it's really, really easy. Like I said, self-serve platform, you simply go on, upload your creative brief or your creator brief and then you can either go into the platform and search for creators using loads of different filters filter it down by vertical by market by audience type by following type you can either go you can even go into the creator's profile and see what their engagement rates are like as well so you know that you're getting a creator that's really highly engaged with their community it's a great way to find new creators that know tiktok really well and know how to create really great creator content so this is something to leverage if you're ever interested in doing creator marketing. And you can see the audiences are already engaging with the creator community, uh, especially across beauty. So these are just some top creators that I found just today um, and also that I know of as well. So Meredith Duxby, Duxbury is um, the controversial foundation applier. Um, I think she was in a video just a few sides back, but she likes to slather all her foundation on. She went absolutely mental. Um, she was basically her own trend on TikTok. She's got around 17.8 million followers, uh, but you can go into the more niche uh, creators 
as well, like Ricky Sandu. So she had 2.8 million followers. And this is all about reviewing products, showcasing products and helping people discover new products and new brands as well on the platform. We also have Creative Center. So if you're ever looking for just a great way to, or an ideation uh, session, essentially, you can go onto the Creative Center to look for creative ideas. It's completely uh, public. So you can go and have a look at it now. Uh, it's completely free of charge as well. You can simply browse and have a look at the top trending keywords on the platform, trending patterns. You can even have a look at top products as well. So if you're interested, you can have a look and see what beauty products are trending on the platform to try and tap into that. Top hashtags, trending songs, it's completely endless. Go and have a look. I highly recommend it if you want to look at supercharging your creative. Creative exchange as well is a really big one. So if maybe you think that you don't quite have the budget or the resource to create new content for TikTok, but you have some ads already that you're using on Instagram or Facebook, we can use creative exchange to help TikTokify those creatives. So there's loads of different packages, but essentially it's working with a pre-verified creative agency to help create new content for you with a minimum media spend of $25,000. So it's really important to remember it's media spend, it's not production spend. Production is completely free. It's on top of a minimum media spend of $25,000. So you can either TikTok five existing content, the creative agency can create brand new content for you, or we've got a new package coming out in 2023, um, which is a subscription package. So it's $35,000 million per month spend, so a total of three months altogether. And it's working with a creative agency ongoing for three months who will create content endlessly for you for that three month period. And then I'll pass it to Hannah again, just to take you through some creator activity that you've run recently. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the biggest question we get asked when we're onboarding new brands onto TikTok. It's like, do we have to run with creator content, influencer content? Our recommendation is always yes. Right? And we can see here from some of the stats that we ran, we saw a 98% higher click-through rate and a 44% lower CPC through to the website. So I think definitely um, making sure you have creator content in your mix. And I think the most important thing is not just taking content that you might have run on some of the other platforms and putting it on TikTok. I think it's really important to, to think about the creative, think about the platform and actually adapt it because it, I think Frankie, you were saying as well, it, it, people don't go there to check it, they go there to watch it. So you need to make sure that the creative um, is built for the platform. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And as you can see, like the results just Yes. <laughs> 98% of higher click through rate is absolutely insane for a creator content so it really does work brilliant thank you and that is everything from me today thank you all so much for listening to this I know we're gonna have a few questions next um but yeah thank you again I appreciate that it. It was a whistle stop tour but obviously any questions please reach out to three three pipe I'll be happy to send over any other resources as well Thanks so much, Frankie and Hannah. Very insightful introduction um, into TikTok, especially for our beauty um, audience. So some questions. Um, Frankie, uh, obviously TikTok is a relatively new platform for a lot of brands. How would you recommend brands initially approach the opportunity? I think it's really important to, first of all, build as many signals as you can. At the end of the day, you're approaching a new platform. Um, you've got a brand new algorithm to work with. You're making sure that you're building those learnings and you're building your brand on the platform as well. So I'd always start um, in mid funnel or upper funnel if you can. I'd look to run some sort of, if you are if you don't have big budgets and you don't want to go all in with brand solutions, that's absolutely fine. Top feed works really, really well for brands who want to start off on the platform. Like I said, no minimum spend. It's just testing out to see how it works. You can run Spark ads with that as well. So you can boost your organic content. It's a really nice way to start off on the platform, see what sort of brand awareness and traction that you get on the platform, but not have to put a load of budget behind it. And then also, um, I would just leverage as many mid-funnel solutions as you possibly can. Community interaction is a really, really big one for brands. Um, it's all about sort of reaching out to people who are more likely to engage, more likely to follow as well. So community action is really about building your brand. So if TikTok is a new platform for your brand, look at community interaction, try and build that following that we talked about, get those likes, get people engaging, and then later down the line, start thinking about the lower funnel, building those signals, actually selling your products. But it's all about building that presence first, 
finding out what works for you, testing it on minimal budgets. Um, yeah, play it safe. You know, you don't want to go all in. But if you do want to go all in, speak to us and we'll build out a full strategy for you. Great. That makes a lot of sense uh, to kind of test as you go. Um, Hannah, you did touch on it, but do you think brands should prioritise creating content themselves or via influencers or is it a combination? What's the what's the magic answer? I think definitely should prioritise the creator content and influencer content. I think if they want to build, the, we get a lot of premium luxury brands come to us and they're worried, and Frankie and I talk about it quite a lot, they're worried about the content that they're going to get from creators not fit the brand. I think it's absolutely fine to have much more control if, if you want. I think it, like I did say it, is just make sure you build it and you produce it with TikTok in mind. You know, it it is a different platform. The content on the platform is different to a super glossy TV ad. So just build it, but just make sure you're not just copying and pasting, I think is our biggest recommendation. And where possible, make sure you're using creative content as well. But you not saying you can't use it, just think differently perhaps about building it and um, and where it's going is our biggest recommendation yeah because I guess the audience is consuming it so differently correct and yeah it's a different different platform different place okay one more for Frankie um what exciting new products um can the beauty brands expect to see in the coming months Yes, we've got quite a few um, really exciting products coming out at the moment. Um, I think one of the big ones that we have at the moment is the Top View Shake Surprise. So this is just making sure that we're generating a bit more engagement around Top View. It's encouraging users to interact with it. Um, essentially how it works is obviously full full premium takeover um, and then it asks them to sort of shake the screen and it comes up with this maybe surprise or a product. I think that works really nicely in terms of demonstrating new products that a brand might have available. Um, but we also have, like I said, we've got the live coming out as well. So that's going to be a big focus for 2023. I think that's something that works really nicely, especially with conjunction in conjunction with creators too. Having a live run with a creator and then using creator-led Spark ads as well to drive traffic in real time to that live is going to be an amazing game changer for, for beauty brands in particular, especially when you're demonstrating the use of a product. Um, I think I've actually seen Charlotte Tilbury use one recently um, where Charlotte Tilbury herself was demonstrating these products on a on a model in real time and the sales were just going absolutely insane because people are seeing how it works so um lives 100% focus on the e-com side of things um there's a lot of new things coming out especially around search like I said keyword insights keep an eye out for it it is coming um because we we noticed that people are using TikTok as a search engine so if you're looking to tap into those users who are already showing intent to purchase your beauty products um search is definitely going to be the way forward so those are three of the main ones um looking at more engagement looking at tapping into the search capabilities definitely lots coming um, and I know you just kind of touched on e-commerce, but Hannah, how frictionless, you know, a lot of brands are going to be asking us how frictionless is that e-commerce experience? Because obviously that's really important. Yeah, I think we've seen, um, and I'm frank, we keep touching on the same thing, but Frankie said, you know, TikTok made me buy it. We see that instantly, you know, you show the ad and you see the sales go up because it's, it's so, it's a crazy, um, like impact that it has. So I think TikTok, you know, are trying to do everything they can to make that um, experience more seamless with TikTok shop. But even users are so used to clicking on things and being taken to the page. I think it's making sure your landing pages are right, making sure, you know, you've checked your mobile speed of those landing pages because TikTok is only mobile. So I think there's things that TikTok are doing, but I think there's also factors that brands should consider when setting up their ads about where they're if they're not using TikTok shop where are they driving them to can we make the page quicker should we be producing you know specific TikTok landing pages so that this you know the experience to the user they're like oh I was on TikTok now I'm on the page you know how can you adapt what the, the things that you have in your control to make the the experience even more frictionless but I think the lives are definitely something that's going to come in quite big this this year just because we're already seeing that just from creator content so then having it live and amplified I think is going to be a massive a massive one in the beauty industry this year okay well I won't pick your brains anymore thank <laughs> you so much for taking the time today both of you and hopefully we can talk again soon 
Thanks, guys.